Hi guys and welcome to this episode of the Happy Knitting Podcast. My name is Julia and I'm coming to you from Germany. Today is Thursday, it is the 2nd of July 2020 and I'm so happy that you're here to join me today to talk about some knitting. If you're a new viewer then a huge welcome to you and if you're coming back then thank you so much for sticking with me. I know this podcast has been a bit less regular than usual and spoiler alert, it probably won't get better anytime soon but I'm doing what I can. In fact I will talk about what I envision as the future of this channel towards the end of the episode. But first up today we'll talk about some finished objects and works in progress. And well, I have a tiny acquisition if you can count it as that. But before we do all of that, let's very, very quickly address two things. First up, we had a giveaway for 10 patterns um, by Kalisha Ryan, who has the Quirky Monday Craft Cast. Sorry, I had to think about that for a second. Thank you so much to everyone who participated and I have already drawn and contacted the, winner, the winners using random.org and there's only one person who hasn't gotten in touch yet and that is Aggie56, so A-G-G-I-E-56. So please get in touch with me so you can tell me what pattern you would like and then our very very generous anonymous donor will send that pattern out to you. Everyone else should receive their pattern very very soon. Um, secondly, usually I always tell you guys that if you want any more information about anything that I talk about, just go to Ravelry to my project pages and while I will again provide that link today, um, without going into too much detail because I have been quite vocal about this on Instagram, let's just say that Ravelry is not being accessible and not being inclusive at the moment, which is a shame. I am very, very disappointed and surprised by everything that is happening. Um, to keep it short, the site as it is now, as it has been revamped, um, is causing pain, is causing harm. And rather than giving the users the option to opt in, you actually have to actively opt out. So I know you can switch back to some form of the old Ravelry which has its own problems, but the fact is that some people can't even get to the point of switching to the old Ravelry and therefore, of course, it is quite harmful. And the reaction and non-apology and all of that it is just very disappointing. So what does that mean for show notes for this channel? I don't really quite know yet. I'm not sure if Ravelry can go back to some form of what it used to be. I really honestly hope so. Um, if it doesn't turn out to be that way in some some point in the future, I will probably think about maybe doing like a blog or something for show notes. But for now, again, seeing as I don't know how much longer I'm going to be able to podcast before baby gets here and all of that, um, if you have any questions and you cannot access Ravelry, um, just use the comments on YouTube and I will try to get back to you again. I am not the best at replying to everything, but I will really try this time because I know that the option of just checking project pages isn't there for everyone. All right. So after like five tries of recording this intro, we seem to have gotten through that. So let's talk about some finished objects. Well, I really only have one, but it is adorable. If I may say so myself, and this is actually a hat that I found through the giveaway thread. So you may remember um, last week for the giveaway, I asked you guys to tell us about a BIPOC or black maker, designer, creator in the Yarny community. And a friend of mine, Emma, she recommended this pattern by this designer. And this is the Merida hat. And the designer is Alejandra Guradero who also seems to go by Kuroki Knitting. Um, and this is a really adorable brioche baby hat with ear flaps. So being brioche, you can actually turn it both ways. I wove in my ends pretty well, I think, so you can't really see which way is the inside or the outside. It has these adorable little garter stitch ears. And this was just so fun to make. It is very neon. I'm not sure if the camera is picking up on it, 
Um, I tried photographing this color and it is a really crazy neon orange, sort of like what builders wear. And my camera usually doesn't really show it that way, but it is adorable. And so I whipped this up in a day. Um, the yarn that I used for this was a gift from a friend of mine from Hazel, who I don't think she is dyeing yarn at the moment. She's not selling it anywhere, but she gave me these two skeins of decay weight yarn quite a while ago and I decided to just use them up. So this is the first thing I knit out of them. I made this tiny little hat and I absolutely love it. Um, I think I made the smallest, yeah, I made the newborn size. I just basically followed the pattern. Um, the only modification, if you can even call it that, is instead of knitting garter stitch for this brim, I just knit the brim flat and then joined it in the round for the short rows that form the um, ear flaps. So that way I didn't have to purl because I am lazy. So that hat is done and I think it's really, really adorable. And then I have quite a bit of the yarn left, um, which currently isn't attached to any project. But I decided that our little boy also needed a matching sweater. So this is what I did. So this once again is another flax sweater by Tin Can Knits. I imagine that following my knitting and my baby knitting is maybe not super interesting because I tend to use the same patterns all over again. But the thing is, I just don't need to buy 10 different sweater patterns for a baby garment if I have a couple, and in this case the flax is actually a free one, that just work really well and I can just modify them. So this is the flax by Tin Can Knits. I did a bit of a shorter uh, ribbing and I also skipped the garter stitch detailing and I basically just did one row stripes using helical knitting and we have a finished body and obviously this still needs sleeves. I don't know why I'm always even with like these tiny sweaters, it takes me so much mental energy to just knit the sleeves. And I know that once I start them, they'll be very, very quick. So I really should just get on that. But this is where we are right now. I knit the 6 to 12 month size because everything I've knit so far, even when I'm doing bigger sizes, because I'm not super, super good about swatching for like baby things, everything I knit seems very small and we might still be in a very cold place over Christmas. So I am now trying to knit more like 6 to 12 month size things for babies so he hopefully won't grow out of everything before it gets proper cold. So this is where we are with that. I think I should have enough yarn um, for both sleeves and yeah, that is what I have been making for our baby. And for this I used 3.5 millimeter needles as I did for the hat as well. So I think for both, possibly there might have been different needle sizes, but I just kind of tend to go with what I know will give me a rough kind of gauge and fabric that I like, and it worked out well so far. So that is one thing that I've been working on. So I just checked, and as I had already suspected, the neon orange blew out the camera, so I'm sorry about that, but Oh well. Since we're already talking about the flax sweater, I should also just talk about my own flax sweater again, a modified version of it. Um, so this is what I'm doing for myself at the moment. This is again the flax sweater. It is not the flax light, which is the fingering weight version. This is still the heavier weight version, but I'm using a lace weight held together with a mohair to create this really flowy sort of open fabric garment for myself. Um, last time I showed this to you I was working on the body and the body is still on the needles but I have once again decided to knit a sleeve first. I will probably even knit both sleeves first and then I have a better idea of how long I want to make this. Fitting sweaters right now is becoming much more difficult because while this still fits over the bump I obviously like my main goal is for this to have the right length after I have a bump and that is getting quite difficult to judge. So I'm kind of postponing that decision to later. But yeah, I have 
I think I'm going to do these sleeves as three quarter length sleeves, so I'm probably almost done with the first sleeve. Um, what else can I tell you about this? This is going to be quite oversized. I added some short rows in the back just to raise like the back neckline a little bit. And I really like this project. It is very, very fluffy. And the yarn that I'm using for this is a cone of Semilla Extra Fino, which is by BC Garin. BC Garin is a Danish company. I'm not sure if they're discontinuing the space or not. I remember that this was on sale and I think, I don't know. I don't know. I, I just know that they were getting rid of a lot of this yarn but i'm not sure if they just renewed their colors or what is happening with that it is a lace white yarn and i'm holding it together with a mohair this mohair is my probably my favorite mohair that i've used so far it is by ito in their sensai base which is a merino silk blend so that is one project I'm working on, once again, using 3.5 millimeter needles. And I think I'm knitting the 42 inch bust size. But while I stopped the increases for the sleeves where it told me to, I did actually add some more increases for the body. Because again, I want it to be a very oversized garment with lots of positive ease. Next up, uh, and this is probably the thing I am proud, most proud of, um, I have been working on my colorwork socks. I will be honest, I kind of wished I only would have to knit one sock for this um, because I love these but they are taking some time and right now, I don't know, I'm not really feeling it. But these are a pair of socks by Ducati who is a German designer who however does also publish her patterns in English. And this is part of her Power Flower Sock Club, which is a club where you get a colorwork sock pattern for May, June and July. So July just came out and I was all like, I'm not going to knit the July socks after I finish these. And then I saw them and they're beautiful. So I'm totally going to knit the July socks as well. I already picked my yarn. <laughs> um, anyhow, so this is the June version. This is Power Flower June. The first sock was already done last time I talked to you and since I talked to you last I have finished the leg of the second sock. I have turned the heel and I am now working on the foot and the gusset decreases and I just dropped my little stitch holder thingies. Um, I actually picked up after, this, after the heel, I picked up for the gusset twice because the first time I did it yesterday, I just messed up really, really badly, so I had to rip back and I was quite, quite grumpy about that. But now I think we are all good, so I just need to push through and finish this sock. I would really like to finish this before I move, which is in, oh my goodness, nine days, ten days. So we'll see how it goes. Who knows? Um, and the yarn that I'm using for this is once again Lang Jawohl. So it's a commercial sock yarn, quite affordable. Um, I'm not sure if I have the right tags here with me. I possibly do. This one is telling me colorway number 25 and colorway number 184. And yeah, it's just a basic one color sock yarn. It comes in a ton of colors and I quite like it for colorwork socks. Next up, since we're already talking about socks, um, I also have a vanilla pair of socks on the needles. Last time I showed these to you, I just had finished the first heel on the first sock. So as you can tell, I finished the second sock. Uh, no, I didn't. I finished the first sock. <laughs> so the first sock is all done and I think it's really fun. This is a sort of self-patterning yarn. It's not a self-striping yarn. It is variegated, but it turns into these like swirly stripes and I really like how they turned out. And yes, they are very colorful, but I do like them. So I am now working on the second sock. I haven't gotten super far with these, but I think I'll pick them up more in the next coming days. Although my, my focus really is on those color work socks because they do require more brain power. So I would like to make progress on the color work socks first and then these I can just knit whenever and they're just super simple. 
So the yarn for these is a German sock yarn. Um, this is by Tausendschön Wolle. And this was one of their sort of Corona lockdown colorways, which I got in March, I believe, called We Will Meet Again. And it's just a basic wool and nylon sock blend, but I really like their yarn. So I'm happy to be supporting and using some yarn that is from Germany and dyed in Germany. And yeah. So that is another sock that I am working on. Um, and then the last thing that I wanted to show you just very quickly because I am so close to being done is my crochet blanket. So this is my crochet rainbow blanket where I'm doing just a ton of, um, what's it called? Half treble stitches or half double crochet depending on what to uh, terminology you're using. Um, and last time I showed this to you, I was, I think, down here. So you can see I've made quite a bit of progress in these last almost two weeks. And oh my goodness, I love this blanket. I always feel like whenever I show it to anyone or take a photo of it, it doesn't actually look that great. But I am so proud of this thing. I don't know why. I just really, really love it. I love the colors. Um, and I think I have eight minis to go or something like that. And then this thing will be done. So again, this has to be done before we move. I mean, it doesn't matter if it is or not, because what, we'll be taking it with us. But I just want this thing to be done. Um, this was supposed to be a baby blanket. It is turning out rather big, so it can be a baby blanket slash grown-up lap blanket. Who cares? I really, really love it. And yeah, this has been bringing me a lot of joy because... These last few weeks, I will not lie, they have been stressful and this is just so peaceful to just crochet, crochet, crochet and not think about anything and I always want to get to the next color so it is quite fun to work on. I am using a 3mm needle hook, I guess. And the yarn that I'm using is, again, Schreepjes. Um, I got one of their sets, I think it came in 58 colors and I'm using 57 of them. I think there's only one mini skein that I just couldn't fit into my rainbow. And they're a mix of their stone washed and their river wash base, both of which are like a cotton and a small percentage acrylic blend. And yeah, it's working out really nicely. I really like it. And yeah. So that is what I have been working on these last two weeks. Okay, so one reason why, why it has been hard to find time to record this week, besides moving and me having crazy allergy attacks, is the fact that our um, neighbors are actually renovating their bathroom and it seems that now they are back at it. So I am really sorry. I hope it doesn't pick up too much and if it does, we're almost done, so if you choose to leave us here, then I promise I won't be offended. <laughs> I just figured we will just finish this podcast now because who knows what will happen until they stop again. And right now it is still relatively quiet. All right, so um, I only have one little acquisition today. Um, I saw these new needles pop up. I'm not sure where I saw them. I think somewhere on Instagram. And they looked really interesting, so I thought I would get one to try. Um, and these are needles by Adi. They're called Adi Novel. Even, even though I found them on the internet in Germany as Adi Rakete. So rocket, I'm not quite sure. Adi kind of confuses me sometimes because like, there's like Adi stock rockets and all these things which seem to be their terminology that they use in the US and possibly UK and then sometimes they have different names for things in Germany but what they are is these needles that they kind of have these stents in them and I'm not doing a very good job explaining it I also have not taken them out of the package but I will now so I'm not sure if you can see, but they have these little dents in them, which are supposed to be really good sort of ergonomic knitting needles. And they are also, they are not round, but they're not square. They're kind of in between, sort of like the cubics, which I kind of like. I don't love them, but I don't hate them either. So I just thought this concept was quite interesting, especially because they're supposed to be more ergonomical. 
so I just decided to get a sock needle. I got a 2.25 millimeter US size one. And I haven't tried these yet. I just thought they were interesting, so I would give them a go for the next time I cast on some new socks. I don't always like Adi needles for socks because their joint isn't always my favorite. But yeah, I just thought I would give them a go and so here we are. Because the good thing is while ordering yarn during a move is not a great idea, like one needle more or less is not going to make a difference. <laughs> that is my thinking anyways. So that is it for acquisitions and I just have a couple of sort of life and general things to talk about, including what is happening with this podcast. And to keep it very short, the answer is I don't know. Obviously, I am, we are moving. We will not be moving once. We'll actually be moving a couple of times within the next few months, depending on when we can finally get to the UK. And right now, who the heck knows? We certainly don't. Um, and also, we are, of course, expecting our baby boy in August. So that will change everything as we know it as well. Um, what does that mean for the podcast? Well, I have really noticed in these last couple of weeks that while I am healthy and I'm fine and my pregnancy is going very, very well, it is getting harder to plan because sometimes I just kind of need to sit down and lay down more and my body is telling me more when to stop. And so things are getting a little bit harder to plan, which I am totally fine with. I am, I think, finally at the point where I realized I need to just let it all go. And the most important thing right now is to get our apartment sorted, um, somehow stay healthy throughout all of this. And so the whole knitting podcast, knitting community thing has to take a bit of a backseat with that. Having said that, um, I know that there are still some weeks to go and once we have moved, I could see myself even having more time. So I think there's a pretty good chance I will keep recording for a couple more weeks. But again, I have learned the one thing, which is to not make any promises anymore because then it just gets stressful. Um, so that is one aspect of it. The other aspect is, of course, kind of where I want this channel to go. And I've been struggling with that for a while. I'm always struggling with sort of the balance between how much I want to share and how much I don't want to share. And I think I am, I don't know, it's hard to tell. While I try to be very authentic and not just give you this sort of polished podcast, which Clearly this isn't and all of that. Um, I also don't want to share too much, but what I've noticed lately is by not sharing some of the things that have happened this year and believe me, you guys, some crazy stuff has happened this year and some things I just cannot talk about, some things I choose not to talk about and that leads to people assuming things. And again, that kind of makes it hard because then there's these assumptions and Apparently my life is this and that and really it isn't but it's nobody's place to know or judge or anything like that. So this probably doesn't make a lot of sense but anyways I'm kind of trying to decide where I want this channel to go and whether I want this to be more just about the knitting or whether I want this to be more conversational and I mean I don't really care if it reaches a smaller audience that way I am fine with that. I'm also kind of rethinking the format. Um, I'm not sure if you watch Melanie's podcast, Melanie, who is Braid and Tinker. She just kind of changed everything and I did a really good video, which really resonated with a lot of the thoughts that I was having, except that I couldn't voice them as well as she does. Um, so yeah, and then there's this whole Ravelry thing, which again makes me kind of think, where is this going? And do I need to move to a different platform for show notes? Do we maybe move more towards Instagram, which has its own inherent problems? So yeah, I think there's a lot of change coming up. Um, and again, I am just giving myself the time to reevaluate once baby is here. So who knows, maybe I'll be back to podcasting within six weeks. 
maybe I'll take a year off. I just don't know right now and I just want to be honest with you guys because I think so far I have been pretty pretty um, good at keeping a schedule and sticking to a relatively fixed format for a couple of years now. I think we're coming up to five years which is crazy but I think change sometimes is good so we'll just see how it goes and as per usual, if you do really want to follow me around and get updates um, outside of the podcast, the best place to do so is through Instagram. So you can find me there as the Happy Knitting Podcast. And while I have also been a little bit more quiet there lately, I generally post more updates on there. So yeah, that's what's been going on regarding the podcast. Um, besides that, um, we are moving. So these past few days I have tackled my entire stash because while we are kind of moving temporarily uh, we are putting most of our belongings in storage but I'm not putting my yarn into storage. Partly because I don't know how long those things will be in storage and I obviously need my yarn and partly because I'm just too worried with something going wrong. So my yarn is traveling in a different place than I am traveling and we will be reunited in what I hope to be like nine or ten weeks. Um, so all my yarn is now neatly stashed into boxes which are way too full. Um, but it was really good actually to go through all of it to kind of, I don't want to say take stock because I do know what I have but to reevaluate and also to see that it is all still packed nicely, there were no sort of incidents with any crawling animals, which is always great to know. The only problem I had was that my um, allergies with like the dust and everything that just comes with moving and packing have been playing up massively. But today I found a solution for that, which is to wear one of my Corona face masks. And that pretty much solved that problem, so I'm much happier now. I'm not sure, I think you can't see it on screen, but I have seven small sort of moving boxes with all of my yarn behind me. And then I have packed one box with the yarn that I am planning to take with me, mostly to knit before baby arrives. I am not really planning or, or I'm not expecting to have great knitting productivity once baby is there, but who knows. So I am, you know, trying to judge what do I need for the next eight seven, six, I, mean, I have no idea, for the next couple of weeks. Um, as you can tell, this is all very much still um, up in the open. <laughs> but I think so far I have taken something like 12 pairs of socks to knit, six sweater quantities, um, and then some random decay weight yarn to knit, like baby things, gloves, mittens, whatever comes to mind. And I also have some more blanket plans, so I'm trying to give myself simple projects that I can work on without having to think too much. I desperately, again, like I said, I want to knit another pair of colorwork socks. So I'm just kind of organizing all of that. And then once that is done, I think my yarn, my majority of my yarn will be traveling away on Saturday, which is the day after tomorrow. And so will my spinning fiber. And then I will get around to like the smaller bits like project bags and needles and notions and all of that, which is still a little bit of work, but it is much easier than the yarn itself. Sadly, I am not participating in Tour de Fleece for two reasons. One is that I actually love Tour de France and I can't spin without watching Tour de France. And obviously that is not happening right now. And the more more pragmatic reason is that my spinning wheel moved out last week so i have no means to spin except for some spindles but then again this morning i actually packed up all of my spinning fiber which thankfully all fit into one vacuum bag so there's no spinning happening on my side right now but i will catch up uh, another day and i'm not sure if i can do tour de fleece while well, I, well tour de fleece who cares I'm not sure if I can spin while watching Tour de France this year because baby will be here by then. Who knows? But I am a very big fan of the cycling. Judge me if you want. 
so who knows maybe i can do some spinning then but right now i am exclusively knitting and crocheting yeah so that's kind of what's been happening again i mentioned that our neighbors are also rebuilding which they're perfectly nice about it but it is of course causing a lot of noise which is quite annoying but really only a few more days to go and then we will be away and i am quite looking forward to the move now i'm very looking forward to being done with moving and then i can just sit back and not worry about anything anymore so yeah that's basically what's been happening um i hope this was somewhat interesting to you i feel like i'm kind of telling you the same thing every week but that is just because you know moving and all of that are definitely at the forefront right now and in case anyone is worried we are being super super safe i'm not carrying or lifting anything heavy i'm actually taking it quite slow which is why we started packing very early because i knew that i wouldn't be able to pull my weight as much as i would if i weren't pregnant so i think that is it for today i really hope that you enjoyed this podcast i hope the background noise wasn't too bad and i will essentially see you when i see you so who knows maybe you will see me in this location again or maybe you will see me in a different location i have absolutely no clue and again i'm not making any promises just to keep myself sane so i thank you guys so much for following me around for your patience and your understanding and i will definitely see you sooner or later until then I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you're staying safe and healthy wherever you are. Um, thank you so much again for watching and participating in this whole knitting community that is the Happy Knitting Podcast. And I will hopefully see you very soon. Happy knitting. Bye.